We are Ashton Doug Brown. I'm Cole Prater with Doug Brown Media. Today with Miss Reed. Miss Reed, how's your afternoon so far? Your day has been so far. It's been good, but I'm nervous to do this. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, sure. Great. Excited to be here, though, Cole. Good. I have a few questions for you. Let's start off with what inspired you to become a school counselor? Okay, starting there. Great question, Cole. Um, you know, I was a teacher before this. So when I was in college, I decided to pursue an education degree because I love working with kids. I was a teacher for five years and I didn't love it. I liked it, but I didn't love it. Um, and I was in my fifth year of teaching and our school counselor was walking in the hallway with a first grade kid. Um, and I saw the counselor in the hallway and I said, I want to do that. That's what I want to do. Um, that was January of 2020. You know what happened a couple months later? You got, hired, you got hired here? No. Think about it. 2020. January of oh, 2020. The pandemic. The pandemic happened. So when I, in my brain, January, I was like, I want to be a school counselor. I said, I want to do what that lady does. And so shutdown happened. I applied to grad school, um, got into grad school to be a counselor. Um, and then fast forward three more years, I'm here. So I guess what inspired me to be a school counselor was I love kids. I love working with your age group specifically because it's hard and exciting and weird. Um, but I think the teaching role was more of like, we got to get in there and teach the kids every day. But being a school counselor kind of meant I got to be more creative, more flexible with my time. Um, so I kind of just got to be the support, the safe space for kids at school. It's more my speed. So you said eighth grade's your favorite grade? Yeah. So like, why exactly? Was it something like that happened to you when you are in eighth grade? Was that some like big moment for you? Or is it just like, you like me so much? <laughs> It's a very good question, Cole. That's a off script question too. Um, I think eighth grade is my favorite grade because it is the transition from middle school to high school. And I specifically loved high school, but I did not love middle school. So when I was in eighth grade, I was like, I'm ready to get out of here and start high school. So I like that you guys are like about to start preparing for that next phase of life. Um, and I'm gonna be really excited to help y'all pick classes, get set up, all that kind of stuff. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, next question. Uh, what advice do you have for eighth graders as they transition to high school? Oh, that's a perfect natural question. Um, I think you guys should, every eighth grader in this room too, I hope they're listening, um, do, don't do what your friends are doing, but do what you should be doing or what you want to do. Does that make sense? It does. So like if your friends are all taking advanced classes, but you're like, I need to be with my friends, but you're actually quite terrible at math, advanced math, please don't take advanced math. Do what's right for you. Do your own thing. Um, and then also be open to new friendships. So like you have your core group of friends, I'm sure maybe in eighth grade, you've had them forever, but just be open to new friendships in high school. I think being a part of different things in high school is really fun and it grows your network of people. That is some great advice. Is it? It is. Great. <laughs> uh, can, you get, can you share some strategies for like managing that stress, managing the extra work, all that kind of stuff as you mm -hmm. go to high school, it gets a little bit harder. Yeah. What are some uh, strategies for helping that? Yeah. Um, I would say make a plan. I think having a plan always is great. Um, but when I think about high school, I think about hectic schedules even more so than now. Um, so you got to be intentional with your time. So make a plan for when you're going to study, um, make a plan for when you're going to have fun. Cause I think both are important. If I'm thinking about stress, um, we can't just be, uh, studying all the time, doing homework all the time. Make sure you have plans to hang out with your friends, go outside, um, so yeah, get better about like having an actual planner and setting that time in your day to be like from seven to eight, I'm always going to know that's when I'm studying, you know? Mm -hmm. But do you think that there, uh, have a plan is good, but you think also having a little bit of just free time between each one. So you like, yes. if something comes up, you can always ha change a little bit to yeah. having seven, eight, I have to study every time. I think you're good at that, Cole, right? Like, like you know how to have fun and also work hard. More, more, more have fun than work hard, but I do both. So let me ask you a question. Can I do that here? Yeah. How do you manage your stress? I'll get stressed. Well, think about it, though. Uh, <laughs> if you were stressed, and I know you've been stressed, have you really not? Oh, I really don't think I have. So maybe the question is, why do you think you're not a stressed out person? What are you doing well? I think because when something happens, like something bad happens, or I feel like something's hard, I mean, it's going to happen anyway. Someone's going to do it. Someone's got to do it. Cause, I mean, someone's going to do the bad thing and have to run forward. You have to do punishment, detention, whatever, guilty by association, whatever. But then someone's got to do it. You got to step up. You got to have 
this, you got to study, you got to do blah, blah, blah. You, gotta, yeah. you have to do it. Yeah. So, I mean, no matter what, it's not that big a deal. Everyone's done it. Everyone's going to do it. You're just a natural leader is what I'm hearing, too. Yeah. yeah. And then time flies. Just have fun while you're doing it. I know. I think that is so important. I think if I think about stress and, like, even adults in our lives – I think we just get too bogged down with the stress and the responsibilities. But life is also fun. Like, we should have fun. We should have fun. Okay, great. All right, you talked about how building relationships, one thing you really want to do as a counselor instead of just, mm -hmm. you're going to have to teach you this and this, whatever. How do you approach building relationships with students? I think since I was new this year, like, my first goal was to learn all y'all's names. I have not done that. There's 400 of you. But I've tried really, really hard. Um, and so I think with building relationships, I want every kid to know that they are important. And so like, I want to learn every person's name, um, as well as starting to learn more about you guys, like your personalities. Um, and so I think what's important too is just being present. So I have to be in my office most of the time, but if I can get out of my office, I want to, mm -hmm. I want to be present. I want to be around. Um, I want to be energetic. I want to have fun. Um, so I think building relationships too is just kind of making that uh, initiation with y'all first, but then also like knowing that we can have fun, like it's school, but we can still have fun. And I think that helps the relationship kind of progress faster. 400 kids is a lot of kids. It's a lot of kids. And I know as being in an office sometimes, I see you get like sixth graders and seventh graders. Mm -hmm. So do you also like, if, when they're just in there, like even if they're not your grade, mm -hmm. what do you do is like the first few questions you ask them every time? Oh, I love that question, Cole. Um, well, usually if they are coming to see me and they're not an eighth grader, something's wrong, right? Like mm -hmm. something has happened. They need some support. Um, so I usually just start out with what's going on. How can I help? Um, and that kind of takes off from there. Um, but I always like to end my conversations with a positive. Um, so once I we kind of talk through the problem, we get to a good point. I kind of like to kind of plant that seed of relationship building. And so like, tell me something good that happened today or tell me something good about what life looks like for you. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. That, okay. That's good too. Instead of it just being, I got to read office for negative stuff. Yeah. It's you in on a positive note. So it keeps you that good mood the rest of the day. Yeah. All right. And then what qualities do you believe are most important in a school counselor? Mm, trustworthy. I think your counselor should be someone that you can trust. Um, Non-judgmental. I think I need to be open-minded. Um, and also creative. I think if I'm thinking about like lessons and doing stuff with y'all, like having a creative approach, a fresh approach, it's important. Yeah, it is. All right, and last question for you before we have to go. What are like some goals for you as a counselor? Like what do you want to, like, do you want to keep being a counselor? Do you want to move to high school one day? Do you want to go lower, like mm -hmm. grade wise? What's your goals? I would love to keep being a middle school counselor. I want to get really good at this. Um, I don't feel good at it yet. Um, that's just because I'm new. But so I want to stay here. I want to stay at Oak Mountain. Um, I want to build on kind of what I've done this year. Um, I can't see myself going younger. I taught younger. Mm -hmm. I love that age. But I've, I'm finding I'm better with y'all's age group and as well as older. So maybe high school one day, but I'm pretty happy here. So this is like your dream job. You just want to stay it's here? It's the dream job for sure. Perfect. Yeah. All right, Matt Media. I'm Cole Prater. Mr. Reed, I loved having you. Thank you. Thank you, Cole. For Matt Media, I'm Cole Prater, signing off.